Hi, and welcome to the KKW Trucking Podcast. It's Dustin, joined by Oscar. Hello. No Eddie, though. No Eddie. No Eddie he's on been, this episode. He's been busy today, so. He's We're, always busy. Yeah. Well, he's, he's that guy around the office where, like, it's funny because, like, if you listen to this podcast, you'd be like, oh, he's always there. Yeah. But, like, if you go to his desk, he's like that guy you're like, hey, anybody seen Eddie? And right. Like, he, I saw him in the break room. I saw him walking to the, the shop. Yeah, you'll, you'll hear Eddie before you see Eddie. Yeah. Oh, there he is. I hear him. I hear him. I hear him down the, down the hall or something. Oh, I gotta yep. go catch him. But always busy. So uh, we'll, we'll try to have Eddie, you know, come co-host uh, as soon as he has some free time. But well, he was at that ELD conference or whatever. Yeah, they're updating the, is it PeopleNet or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so he's uh, he's catching up on everything he missed out for the last two days here at the office. And um, one of our recruiters had a requested day off, so he's filling in on the phones. Yeah. Just very busy guy. Yeah. So, Eddie, keep up the good work. But, all right, let's go ahead. It's been a while, Oscar. We haven't actually recorded a podcast. I mean, we might as well make note of it up front. It's been yeah. about an extra month. Sorry. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> it's just been scheduling conflicts, and we've been busy here. We had the uh, driver championships and all of that. The rodeo took up a lot of energy and time, and, um, you know, like you said, Eddie's busy, I'm busy, you're busy, and then you're like, well, i got to work on working on this. And I'm going to give a special shout-out in a second, but for anybody, I'm busy, not at work, not at the office, but, like, I am a little stressed out. I'm getting married, so yeah. that's coming up. That's no easy, <laughs> you know, no easy thing to accomplish, but... Yeah, it just you, it took you long enough. It weighs on you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I go to night school, and uh, it's been an adjustment for for that. And but yeah, like how's you that said, going? Night school, huh? It's good. It's fun. That's cool. Yeah, always fun to pick up a new skill. Yeah, I'm about a third of the way done right now. So, nice. hopefully, we wrap it up pretty quick, and it'll be over before you know it. All right. Well, let, we'll go ahead and jump into our uh, shout outs then on this episode. So first up, we did want to give a huge shout out to everyone, all of our drivers who participated in this year's. CTA Driver Championship. The Truck Rodeo. Yes, it was the Southern Division. We had a tent. Obviously, we had a bunch of people come out. Yeah. It was fun. A lot of drivers and their families. Yeah, it was the most drivers we had. I mean, I've only gone to two of the driver championships, but I heard it's the most we've had in maybe five years. Yeah, a long time. Uh, I've been here for four, so yeah, it was the most that since I've been here. I remember, I, I know, I counted in the photo, and I don't know if everybody was actually in the photo, but I heard it was 25-plus drivers competed for KKW. Yeah, we had awesome. 30 signed up, but um, a couple of them were stuck on the road, you know, conflicts and this and that. So, yeah, we ended up having about 25. It was pretty great. And, yeah. uh, I mean, everyone who came out to support the drivers, there were a ton of family, friends, obviously a lot of the KKW team. Yeah, a lot of family and friends. A couple of drivers were here in the yard, because I picked up a, a trailer early in the morning, and they're like, hey, where, where are you going? I'm like, going to the truck rodeo. And they're like, where's that at? I was like, Fontana. And like, Can we come? So a couple of drivers cool. that were just hanging out in the, in the terminal ended up showing up too. And it is. It's fun. Yeah. They have, uh, you know, food, games. Um, Eddie was doing this, uh, it was like a raffle. Raffles, yeah. They had um, they gave cornhole. They good prizes too. Yeah, I learned how to play cornhole from uh, Adam Rios. He takes it serious. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man, that was fun. And remember, Eddie, he did this thing. It was this raffle where he like, you he handed out money. Yeah, so everybody trivia questions. Yeah, everybody got out. Got when they showed up, everybody got like five hundred bucks, Monopoly money. Yeah, right. And then you can earn extra money by doing certain things, or you can trade money. And then he would raffle out, like auction off certain things. But it was like a mystery game. Yeah, you never you knew what was in on it. it based yeah. on the size and the packaging and mm-hmm. all this different stuff. Yeah, so somebody, I think uh, Ryan's girlfriend ended up paying like $700 for a bottle of hot sauce. Yeah, and like someone else paid like 1200 for a can of dog food. <laughs> and it was hilarious because when Eddie, he knew what it was, right? Yeah. So he hands them the prize and there he's like, open it, open it. So... It was like out of a comedy because literally right after they open it, they hold up the dog food and everybody look, turns to look at Eddie and he's like way he's off gone, in the distance gone. running away yeah, laughing. took off, yeah. So it was pretty great. Oh yeah, it was it was pure comedy. Ryan was a judge. Ryan was a judge, yeah. Running around doing something. Yeah, he was in that. It's like a pace car. You almost follow and then collect all the scores. Yeah, the info. yeah. Ryan was a big help. Eddie Eddie was like, I couldn't have done it without Ryan. Yeah, he, big shout out to Ryan. Yeah, he said he was, oh, he was helping me out. He was getting the driver situated, getting all this, all that done. So, Yeah, awesome. Yeah, he was there super early too. I think he was there at like 5.30 in the morning Yeah, or Yeah, 5, I think. Yeah, yeah so Ryan, you're the man. Uh, please give us or help us give a big welcome to Jill, Jill Kelly, who is joining us as our new Portland manager. Welcome to the family, Jill. 
Yeah, I've been in communication. She's actually sending me a message. We'll be part of the uh, you know the email that this podcast is re- released with. The monthly email, yeah. And uh, yeah, very excited that you're joining the team. That's awesome. Okay, next up on our shout-outs, big shout-out to Yokohama Tire, who came out for a photo shoot with one of our new Volvos. They threw some tires on there. They had a new one coming out. And uh, we got some really great pictures. We're going to use them in, you know, promotional material, recruiting. Yeah. And they, you know, we're talking like these guys were like Hollywood photographers. Yeah, they took all day. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, it'll be a few hours. hours. Yeah. And then you're like, man, they're still out there taking all the lighting's off. We need to wait on this. We need to wait on that. And it's like, damn, just take the picture, dude. Yeah. And I do. I got to give a tip tip of the cap to those guys. I mean, they showed up. They had coffee and food and they had ordered lunch and all this stuff. So... They did it real pro. I mean, yeah. it wasn't the worst way to have to spend your time. Yeah. But uh, the photos turned out great. Pictures so. look great, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, here's what I was talking about before. I know I would like to give a personal shout out on, the, out on this episode. I don't normally do personal shout outs, but uh, a week from this recording, so okay. on May 17th, Next Friday. I am getting married. So I wanted to give a big shout out to my fiance, Ooh. Steph. Uh, very excited. I love you. And... Um, yeah, so I'll actually, you know, uh, I'm going to be releasing this, you know, ASAP. Yeah. But next week, I will actually be out of the office, I think, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, to take care of all oh, of wow. that. So, yeah, I, I want to make sure to give her, you know, a lot of love. Oh, man. Weddings are weddings are awesome. I remember when I got married, I had to, uh, I, was on, I was on leave. I was in the Navy. And I flew overnight from Japan. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then... Like I, all the way around the world. Pretty, yeah, it's a 12-hour flight. And uh, then... So I was up all day waiting for my flight. Then I was up during the flight because I can't sleep on planes. Then I was up all day here getting everything organized. And so I started like... I started like passing out everywhere I sat down. You're like hallucinating? Yeah. I, yeah, I was hallucinating. <laughs> and I saw a leprechaun at one point. All right, that's nice. another story. But um, yeah, so I was, I was getting everything ready for like two days after I got here. I was still jet lagged and then... It was like the wedding. It was it was great, and they're they're a lot of fun, especially if you just because finally you, when after you get married, you just kind of let loose, and you're like, all right, that's done because you've been so stressed. Yeah. So you're gonna have a lot of fun. Then that that weekend's gonna be a lot of fun for you. Yeah, I really I look forward to it. My family's coming out from you know I've, we've mentioned before I'm from the Midwest, in yeah. Indiana, so you know having my family and uh, a bunch of my friends come out here. Nice. Which, they, they've all kind of trickled out here through the years. I've been out here since 2005, but. It's been probably maybe once my college graduation where there was a group of them. Yeah. Most of the time, it's like one of your buddies is in town or he's doing something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. So I did want to give a huge shout out to uh, all of our, our drivers or really uh, the, the people that have interacted with us online who left us a review during the past, well, really like month and a half. Mm. Um, it's been an excellent month-ish. Uh, so shout out to Ang Stewart. Jim Hicks, Douglas Gomez, and Daniel Stewart. So appreciate you guys all leaving us five star reviews. Muchas gracias. Good feedback, and um, yeah, much thank love. You. Yeah. So as always, we end our shout outs by just saying we want to thank all of our drivers. Um, we really appreciate everybody, and uh, you know, enjoy all the hard work you guys. Oh do. yeah, so definitely. And as as uh, Mr. Firestone would say, without you, we wouldn't have a job. Exactly. So you guys, you guys really push us forward and. We're here to support you and and try to make your experience the best possible. So, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, now we don't have Eddie to do kind of the echo (laughs) for the intro, but it's now time for Quick Hits. Quick Hits. All right. So, first up, we've opened a new yard in Fontana where FTS manager Bob will be working out of from now on. So, obviously, that was uh, before this recording, so all the drivers, everybody's up to date on that. But it does look pretty cool. Have you been over there? Yeah. Yeah, I went uh, about two weeks ago as soon as they moved. And um, I, I went there before we moved. When we were scoping it out. I went with Dennis, M- Mr. Firestone. Yeah. And um, there was a big, like, light pole in the middle with, like, pillars all around they're protecting it they got rid of that they repaved the whole yard they put a giant fence around it awesome painted it uh, we got the whole facility got it up and running um it's really it's really cool it, it's nice awesome. so that's like our local terminal now yeah i, I kind of want to make it over there myself fontana's not too far from us but i would love to go get you know some photos of the office and yeah maybe show it off a little bit that's it's, cool. it's pretty cool it's right next to uh the old the old Volvo dealership, which is now the used Volvo dealership. Huh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, one of the things I wanted to reiterate, we actually talked about this on a previous podcast when we had uh, our HR manager, Alicia, on. She had said that uh, all of our drivers and our employees are eligible to take advantage of the KKW sponsorship program. So for the details and all the information, uh, it'll be included in our monthly email. And of course, you can go back a couple episodes and listen when Alicia was on. But if you would like to take advantage of that program, be sure to reach out to her. She's on the uh, you know second story at the office. Uh, just stop by her desk, or as I said in the email and everything, we'll list her contact information again. Yeah, yeah. One of the drivers was just asking about this, and I was like, yeah, go talk to Alicia, and she'll get you all squared away. Yeah, it was pretty cool. We actually had a robotics program take advantage of it. I went over there and got some video and pictures, and they, they took our stickers. It's on their robot that competed in like the state championship. Oh, really? Stuff. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Really neat. So like those... Uh... What do they call them? Like the death. Death metal robots? Yeah, like, no, I don't know if they were, I, I think they were doing, a, the competition was like, they had to use robots to like collect um, different like shapes. So there was like balls, they would have bricks, oh, and like okay. each one had a certain point value and they would have to get it into, mm. a, you know, almost like a goal. So, which was cool. Um, yeah. it, was, it was fun checking all that out. Um, I do want everybody to take a second and mark your calendars because our next anniversary banquet is coming up in August. August 10th, to be exact. Um, if you remember last year's, it was 80s themed and... Was it Casino like, 80s? Casino 80s. It was night, like going to like, Reno. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... Uh, what, what's that movie? The El Royale? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, it was a fun night. Um, they had a photo booth station set up with a bunch of like uh, props. Right. And uh, yeah, like roulette and blackjack and... They, you know, they give you a few drink tickets, and they have, like, a yeah. signature drink, and everybody kind of lets loose and, and has some fun. We raffled off some Angels tickets, a night stay in, in Vegas, a um, whole bunch of cool stuff. It's, it's really a fun time. Every driver is invited. Bring your family. Um, yeah, I've been twice. The one before that was at the airport in, in Chino. Chino. Yeah. And uh, it was a lot of fun. That one was outdoors. This one last year was indoors. But uh, both were a really great time. A lot of the drivers make it out. And here's the here's the catch. So rumor has it that this year it's going to be kind of like a comedian theme. They might even be having someone perform. Oh, okay. Now, it's going to be right here at the Doubletree in Pomona. That is the rumor. Okay. So right it's, down not, the street. it's not a done deal. But if it's right down the street, our drivers should be able to get there no problem. Oh, yeah. Which you can walk there. Yeah, I would hope to see you know a lot of people come out because it's it's fun. But you know a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't know where that's at, or right. I don't have a hotel. Or well, something. we have the um, we have the shuttle van here and it holds like fifteen people. So I, I don't know. I think we can get a lot of people to show oh, up. Yeah. It's gonna be a good time. I'll be shuttling. Back Absolutely. And forth. Next up on Quick Hits, the Pilot Flying J has updated their app. Now I don't know how often all of our drivers are at you know Flying J's, but. Um, the new updates include being able to find real-time open pumps, uh, and they're calling this mobile fueling. Now, I believe that is, it's an upgrade. They had a version of it, yeah. but it wasn't real-time. Yeah. Now it's showing, like, literally, these are the open pumps. Um, you can reserve a shower and parking spaces, and I guess really what the upgrade is, I think, I don't know that that service was uh, 100% identical, but they've actually added more showers and parking spaces. That's good. Yeah, and I, I heard know parking's they were, an issue. They were working on their Wi-Fi in the parking lots, I think about a year ago. Well, it sounds like, I mean, if they're doing this stuff, I would assume they would want to upgrade that as well. Yeah. And then finally, they increased uh, their in-app offers for drivers for a lot of the different uh, services well, that's and, cool. and vendors yeah. they have inside. I'm more of a loves guy myself, so. Yeah, just worth noting. Um, Pilot has good Cinnabon, though, so. Pretty cool. <laughs> And finally, uh, I don't know if you saw this, Oscar. Pretty crazy. Yeah. But Falcon Transportation over out of, I believe it was Ohio. Somewhere in the mid, yeah, mid Midwest. But they were owned it from. They were owned by a company here in L.A. Yeah, they got bought out. Yeah. And well, I guess Falcon Transportation shut down. Now, what was truly shocking about that kind of industry news was that there was no notice. No notice. They just and, shut um, down overnight. They left drivers stranded. Um, guys were abandoning their trucks in, in truck stops and, and at their terminals and, and flying themselves or getting bus tickets home. Some drivers hadn't been paid for weeks, and uh, I, it was yeah, it was. Situation. I was watching some news clips about it. it. Was it's a sad, sad situation for drivers. Um, the drivers shouldn't have too much of an issue finding a new job because drivers are in so much demand. You knew exactly where I was going. Yeah, but uh, I mean, your driver's license is like gold right now, so. 
as long as you have a clean driving record, you'll be able to find a job within a day. Yeah. And uh, it's just all the administrative personnel trying to find a new job. And they interviewed this couple that, you know, one of them was a dispatcher and the other one worked in the customer service department. And they're both out of a job now, as yeah. well as, like, the guy's mom. That's crazy. Yeah, so it's like, it's sad and, and I, I hate to see things like that, but this isn't the first time. And just, like, two weeks after this company shut down, another company sh shut its doors overnight. Well, to those drivers, you know, any of you guys, obviously, it's an unfortunate situation. But uh, KKW is still here. We're hiring. Come on uh, in. You know, I'm sure if Eddie was here, he'd be doing one of those like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you guys live within the 11 Western states and we have a term, uh, drop yard within a 60 mile radius, feel free to send in an application. We have drop yards in Fresno, Bakersfield, Portland, Seattle, Reno, Denver, Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Vegas, Las Vegas, and, and Southern, uh, California. Southern California, obviously. And Denver. Yeah. So. All right. Well, Oscar, that does it for Quick Hits. So awesome. Now let's move on to uh, a little bit of fun. Okay. Yeah. All right, Oscar. We're back. Yes, we and are. We are joined by Sarah Sherman, our safety manager, who is here to talk about safety. milestones. Milestones. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing, Sarah? Hey, Sarah. Doing good. Doing great. Well, we're really excited because obviously if you've been to the main office, you've probably seen the construction that's going on in the patio in the back. Probably heard it too. It's Lots pretty loud. loud. But Very loud. There is, like what do they say? There's reasoning behind the madness or... What there's is a the method reason? to our madness? Yeah, there's a method to our madness. Yeah. So what exactly are we up to out there? Now, what's this milestone program? Well, um, this whole program started off with trying to recognize our drivers who have driven over 1 million miles for KKW. Very cool. If you've ever been to our offices, you'll see at the front, uh, at the front entrance, we have a, um, a frame with photos and pla little plaques of the drivers who have gone over 1 million miles. But uh, we have not updated as of recent. And so we were thinking of different ways to acknowledge and to congratulate and, you know, celebrate yeah. our drivers who have hit this point. And um, it all happened one day. I was driving along the road with my dad in Chino Hills. And there was this man who at his house was selling um, some, some wood, you know, firewood. And so sure. we stopped by and he also is an artisan. And what he does is he is, a, he, um, uh, sand blasts into stone and he makes a lot of um, m monuments for the for um, oh different locations he also does um, you know little wow. pla and does plaques for for companies and and so on and so we That's started cool. talking yeah. and I was looking at his artwork and it was beautiful and for some reason that evening when I was ta thinking of how we can you know um, you know just do something special. Special for our mil million mile drivers. I thought of maybe he can do some awards for us and sandblast into this That's sand. Cool. It's like a sandstone. And if you can picture it, it's maybe about a eight by 10, a little bit maybe larger, but okay. it's a, a thin slate of sandstone where he can sandblast and paint into the sandblast and make an award. And I just thought it was wonderful. And then it just naturally came to me that we should call it the Milestone Award. There you go. <laughs> you know? And so I was... Everything uh, lines up. Yeah. So then so we were in a meeting and we were talking it out with Dennis, Lynette, Steve. You know, we were in a manager meeting and I was telling everybody my idea and everybody liked it. Everybody thought this awesome. was a great idea. And, and just around the time that uh, they were making plans for updating our, our patio on the back, uh, Dennis and Steve were really uh, the ones who, who are, were the architects of, of that. But I think they, they, they told me they, they took that idea and went further with it in that around the water feature out in the patio, uh, on the ground, we have pavers all over mm -hmm. that whole patio. What they're going to do is they're going to take it, um, the same idea, and have those, some of those pavers engraved with the drivers who have hit that that's cool m million mile so that so not only do we have that water feature and it's going to be like a memorialized to all our drivers who have hit one million miles with kkw yeah so it kind of grew into this whole idea of this this um milestone award for them that's pretty amazing and i know we have a lot including our, our very own shop director he's hit over a million miles yes and, yeah um, 
Tim Abbott. Tim Abbott, yeah, he's been here since 97. I know, and I mean, that that really is a lot of miles to be on the road. Our drivers are, are just great. Whenever we hit um, uh, these Driver of the Month awards, we get so many drivers out there that are getting awards and have millions of miles behind them and are safe. And we just need to recognize them when it's our company having these drivers hitting yeah, those right. those milestones. Um, and and so I, I think it's awesome. I mean, um, you know, you could hear it in my voice. I get so excited. So I, I tell everybody, I feel like since I, you know, came to KKW, I feel like I'm a cheerleader for the truck driving, you know, industry. Yeah. I'm constantly, even outside of work, talking up what a wonderful job drivers do, how they're the unsung heroes of sure. uh, of this nation, and how, you know, without them, we wouldn't, you know, have, have what, we, what we have yeah. it on our daily basis. Right. And, and just how safe they are on the roads and how everybody should really, really um, consider that when they're traveling around our drive, any, yeah. not just our drivers, any yeah. driver in, yeah. in general. I mean, you know, and it's a pretty neat way, though, to like, you know, kind of uh, almost like immortalize, you know, our drivers for, you know, a, a really cool milestone. And I think, you know, to myself as somebody who's only been here for a short time, had that been there, I would probably take a look at it. You you can't help but recognize something like that and be like, hey, what are the names? Yeah. You know, what's everything for? And Yes. If you have the miles on there, it's just real. I, I don't know. It's really cool. We have a million, two million. I don't, I don't know if we have any three million mile drivers. We, I know we have some two million mile yeah. drivers. I, I know that. Uh, I've talked to a few of them, and, and, and they're so proud of that. Yeah. They, when you talk to them, they're just so proud of their, their you know, millions accomplishment. Millions millions of miles on the road. And it's weird because that's something that, you know, I think if you if you kind of browse the news... You know, you might see people who hit these milestones for like major companies. Right. But, you know, it's almost my job within our company to make sure that at least, you know, within our our network, everybody should know. That's yeah. such a yeah. that's such an awesome, you know, milestone to hit. It's a big deal, yeah, especially to be safe for that long and you're driving every day and you're seeing the same things every day and it, you can get complacent and then the guys that don't and make it to a million and two million miles that's a, it's a really big deal so that's why i mean very proud to have you come on and talk about it on the podcast and i'm uh, so happy and pleased to do so, so is there a is there a like an eta on when that's going to be done I know well, they've been working on it for a couple months now. Yes, I don't have the um, the ETA on on finalization of of the patio pavers. I do know that we're going to have those awards ready um, by mid year this year. Um, like next month. We, yeah. Well, here we are in May, so we're yeah. looking we're looking the end of June, July, having those awards ready. And also, um, I think um, I, I I'm not sure, so I don't you know I shouldn't maybe shouldn't say it, but. We do. We want to maybe have some kind of a, a celebration to to hand these out to. Like a barbecue. So cool. We're gonna, we, so something will be coming up where okay, we'll cool. be making sure that these drivers are are properly acknowledged uh, when they. I'll bring out these. the smoker and smoke some like brisket or something. <laughs> and maybe we'll. Hey, who knows? You know, if they're if they're here, maybe we'll set up the mic and see if we can get some of these million mile that would drivers. Be awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. That would be great to get some of their. Yeah. You know, hear a little bit about their experience and tell us about exactly I just mean, how long they've been in the industry. Some of yeah. some some of their high points and you know right. the, that they that. Yeah, because a lot share. of these guys that have been driving that long, they've hauled everything: like reefer, hazmat, flatbed, oversized, uh, national forty-eight states, or regional, or tri-state area, or short yeah. line, or local. And if, well, let's keep that in mind when we get some of them here. We'll bust the mic out. I mean, we got the training room. We got that's a yeah. great idea. So I, we'll I, keep that's an something eye on. to look forward to. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you coming on and just kind of illuminating what all that's about, what that noise has been, and and what we're trying to do but it's not it's not just a new patio yeah. it's going to be something very special honoring honoring know, the uh, these these great great drivers who who have just been out there you know working hard every day and um you know are like i said earlier are unsung heroes yeah, yeah. yeah. so all right well thank you so much Cheryl. we really appreciate it all right thank you thank you miss sherman all right now we're back and this time, Oscar, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Okay. This is a segment that essentially I have dedicated to Oscar. 
I mean, I like that. Yeah. It's called 10 Questions with Oscar. Oh, snap. So it's going to be kind of cool. Get to know you a little bit better. Uh, since it's you and I one on one, I figured uh, let's just have some discussion. Okay. So start off, question number one. Curious, how long have you worked for KKW? Uh, this summer will be four years. Okay. Yeah. And how long did you drive for KKW? That's not question number two. It's uh, a follow Well, I drove over the road for a year and then local for another year. Okay. And I remember you saying that when you came to KKW, this was your, your first trucking company, correct? Yeah. This is my first and only trucking company. Okay. And I want to keep it that way. For sure. <laughs> well, you're, you're doing... You know, you're you're solidifying yourself here as a host on the podcast. Well, so. I try to be a jack of all trades. Yeah, you're indispensable. You've actually worked in, I think, of like the five departments we have in this building here. You've worked in at least three of them. Yeah, and uh, I keep telling Tim, the shop director, that I'm gonna I'm gonna move Go to weld the sh- some trailers. I'm, no, I'm gonna there. yeah, I'm gonna move back to the shop next. Nice. That's my next uh, my next uh, conquest. Cool. cool. <laughs> well, okay. Official question number two. Mm-hmm. Um, since you said that you were OTR, yeah. what is your favorite state to drive in? Uh, and it could be, I mean, for any number of reasons, one has the best food. It could be that the roads are just flat. It could be, I don't know. I like, well, Let's put I, it I don't way. have a favorite state. I have a favorite drive. Okay. Where my, is that? Uh, Denver. Driving to Denver is my favorite. Now I would, th- my intuition tells me that. That would not be a lot of people's favorite. It's not. Okay. It's not a lot of people's favorite. People think I'm crazy. They're like, what? Don't you have to go over the Rockies? Like, yeah, I love going over the Rockies. What are the grades there? Uh, they're pretty steep. Seven? I think it's the steepest grade we hit. Yeah, seven, okay. seven percent. I know everybody always talks about, uh, is it Donner Pass up by Reno? Yeah. Yeah, that's, Which... that's, I did Donner Pass when I first got here for a month. Every day, twice a day for a month. Damn. Me and, uh, actually me and Eddie, when he, Eddie was still driving, uh, we helped move our uh, our Petco account from oh, that's right. yeah from Stockton to Reno. Yeah. So they asked me they're like, "Hey, it's guaranteed 11 hours a day." I think it was like 22 bucks an Just hour. Drive back and forth. All you have to do off. is shuttle trailers from from Reno to Stockton and I said, "Yeah, I can do that." So I did it for a month. Now, I'm assuming you go to Denver too. Uh, a lot of snow in the winter, yeah. Yeah, in the winter it's pretty bad. You have to do a lot of chaining. But I don't, I don't mind chaining. I know a lot of guys are like, oh, I'll never chain if I have to chain. I don't have to be out on the road. But I'm, I'm, I'm a weirdo. I chained one time uh, from just outside of Weed, California, all the way into Bend, Oregon, 180 oh, wow. miles. Yeah. That's a long ride. Yeah, it took about six hours. So what is it about Denver? Uh, you hit four states in one day. So you drive, you actually start, if you start here in the yard, um, you go California, Nevada, Arizona, and Utah all in one day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's, uh, you see everything. You see like the desert, you see trees, you see the mountains. If it's, if it's, That's cool. yeah, if it's the winter, you go from like sunny California to like, you're in the deep snow the next day. It's kind of the inverse of what I asked actually. I was like, what's your favorite state? You're like, my favorite drive is the one where you go through all the states. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> per- yeah. Pretty much. I don't, I mean, uh, favorite state. I don't really have a favorite state, you know, I mean, because sure. if you're driving it, they're kind of all look the same. But my favorite drive is with the, yeah, the one where you hit the most states all in okay. one day. Because if, I mean, if you go to Seattle, you're going to be in California your entire first day. Right. And you don't get out of California the first day. Now, you maybe you could clarify. I've never really been up to the Pacific Northwest. Mm-hmm. Is it as green as they say? A lot of trees, yeah. It's pretty green. I've always wanted to go. Like, there's something about that that just seems so... Yeah, you calming. actually... I, um, I had a Sirius XM radio, and I had the big 10-inch trucker antenna on my truck. Yeah. And you actually lose service with that big extended antenna because there's so many trees there. That's crazy. Yeah. I hope to make it up there. That's on my It's list. beautiful. Yeah, I, I uh, when I got out of the Navy, I processed out in Bangor, Washington. So I flew my wife up to SeaTac in Seattle, the airport in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And we rented a car. We road tripped from Seattle all the way down here. And cool. uh, yeah, it was, my wife was just, oh my God, it looks just like Twilight. And that was when the Twilight movies oh, yeah. were, you know, big or whatever, but. <laughs> to give context. Really. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but yeah, it is, it's really green. There's a lot of trees. It's cloudy most of the time and it rains a lot. And, but it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Cool. cool. Well, um, let's, on that note then, mm-hmm. question number three when we're talking about different routes, what is the most difficult stretch you've ever driven? Uh, the most difficult stretch, 
I mean, I, technically, it could be an experience, so not necessarily just a stretch of highway. It could have been during a crazy storm, or like, what was? what's one of the crazier things uh, when you're out on the road? Donner. Yeah? Yeah, Donner Pass is pretty crazy. Cause it, That's what I hear. It'd be, pr- it'd be perfectly nice and sunny in Reno, and then they're like, oh, put your chains on your truck. And it's, it's a nice day. And I'm like, why do I have to put my chains on if it's a nice day? So I'm like, whatever. Because they won't let you move unless you have chains right. on. So I put my chains on and I'm driving and there's no snow on the ground. There's no wind. There's no nothing. And then out of like a, in a blink of an eye, it's a whiteout. And you That's can't, crazy. Yeah, and you can't see anything. And the, yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's pretty scary. Well, the, I mean, the unpredictability of that, even as just, you know, obviously I don't have a class A, but just driving yeah. and just out of nowhere, you're hitting something that just is a game changer. Yeah. And I show some videos here during orient. I run the orientations here, but I show a couple of videos where it's, it's just, it's like that. It's nice that there's no snow on the ground. And then all of a sudden it's, it's like clear as day. There's a, there's a white line and that's where it just starts. That's crazy. Yeah. I've always wondered, you know, I've seen those videos like where people, they, they find the end of the storm. You know, where it's almost like most storms, we, we tend to experience them as they just kind of peter out. Mm-hmm. But there are those storms where like somebody will just like, boom, you just drive into rain. Yeah. And I have a couple of those. Videos. Yeah. And yeah. you see like, it almost looks like a, like a wall. Yeah. That's and, pretty uh, crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm sure most of the drivers listening are probably like, yep, seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Donner is, uh, is, is it's, either, it's, it's in between that one or uh, there's another one in Oregon coming into like Pedalton and I forget the name of it. Um, Casey knows it, but, uh, that one, that one can get pretty scary at times too. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, sticking with out on the road, question number four, what is your favorite fast food restaurant? Favorite fast food is, uh, Carl's Jr. Really? Double bacon, Western cheeseburger. Yeah. I mean, you're lucky we got one right here. Down no, there. I'm unlucky that we have one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Eileen's daughter works there, and she recognized, oh, hey, Oscar, what's going on? I'm like, dang it, you know my name. I come here too much, yep. you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah, double. B- and, and the bad thing with that is most of the Love's truck stops, they have a Carl's Jr. in the truck stop. So I would, oh, like, I went, I, when I started trucking, I was 210 pounds, and I shot up to 280 pounds wow. within, uh, within, like, six months. That's a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. and I would just, because I would be so tired from driving all day, and then I would go inside and get a, Big old double cheeseburger and large fries and a it large coke. It felt so good. You're like, felt, this it, is exactly it's, what I it's, wanted. It's like it's instant mouth pleasure. Yeah, you know, and you and then you just feel tired at the end of the day after eating a big fat cheeseburger. So you just knock out. Yep. And that's the worst thing you can do is just start sleeping right after a big meal. So I gained weight really fast. I will say this in regards to Carl's Jr. Their their Western bacon cheeseburger, right? Yeah. To me, it, it is actually something that I like. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fast food I have out of convenience. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Like like you said, I may be tired or, or I'm not unfamiliar with an area. So I'm like, I'm just going to get something I know. Yeah. But like the Western bacon cheeseburger there, I'm like, I like it. I just, it's so good. I will go get it. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, maybe we can get yeah. Carl's Jr. to sponsor this podcast. I had to, uh, once I went local, <laughs> I was like, I need to lose some weight. I was, I was 280, dude. Like I was, yeah. I was a big guy. So when I went local... My dispatcher, Bob, the one that just moved to Fontana, he yeah. was like, hey, just so you know, you're going to have to unload mattresses occasionally. And I said, perfect. Give me all the mattress loads you have. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do it. So sometimes... Let's work he, this off. Yeah. So he would give me like three mattress loads a day sometimes, and a trailer can hold like 100 mattresses. And that's that's a lot. Yeah. So uh, I, I lost... If you've ever moved a mattress, yet. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a pain. So I lost I lost 40 pounds in about two months right away. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and then the, the, I kind of like hit a wall, and I kind of like stopped losing and as much. It's like weight. a diet thing. You know? Yeah, then I had to go on the keto, and I had to cut out sugar, and I had to stop drinking beer, and yeah, yeah. So now I'm back down to two twelve. So I'm I'm kind of back. That's pretty my, good, actually. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, cool. Um, question number five: Would you ever start your own podcast? Yeah, we we've actually talked about this. <laughs> you and I'm me. Curious. Yeah. But we can't. The hardest thing is, and you. You uh, you told me what I should get and equalizers and microphones and all that stuff. I can't I can't pick a good name, and it has to have a good name. I always liked I don't know why I always thought something like Oscar After Dark. Oscar, it just sounds dirty, bro. But I mean I don't know. <laughs> it, it's like that. You just know you're gonna get a more like I guess in a way adult conversation. Yeah, and uh, like I'm pretty. Uh, tapered back on on this one obviously for, yeah. for a lot of reasons but yeah i do like to talk about like uh, i get pretty 
I can talk about a lot of things, you know, sure. and I can hold a conversation about anything. So, I mean, starting a podcast is actually if you set a, a pretty uh, conve- like good release schedule. Yeah, it can be fun, especially like uh, if you're doing anything that's remotely topical. Yeah, well, I I know we usually release ours once a month. Yeah, but I want to be more on the every two or like two or three times a week. You know, yeah. and have like a long format like podcasts and things. Because like, I mean, if you let me go, dude, I'll just talk. You know, but you have you have a podcast with your buddies. I do. I actually you release host it once a week. Podcasts. Yeah, and it's we've ironically we actually just hit our three hundredth episode. Yeah. So you think we've been doing that for three hundred weeks? Yeah. What does that come out to? Fifty two weeks in a year, almost six years, I think. Yeah. Something like that. So to have that consistency and to do that over a long period of time. It's definitely something to be proud of, but it's a lot of fun. You meet fun fun people, you have good conversations. Yeah, plus you have a great name. It's Indecisive by Choice, and you have a great logo, you know? The logo's cool. I mean, I I wish our our listeners right now could see the logo, but yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's my biggest thing. It's just coming up with a name. I'm not so much worried about the logo or whatever. I'll just put a pretty picture of my on my face up there. Find a cool font until you end up getting some cash or something to find the logo. uh, Oscar After Dark just sounds dirty. Well, what have you settled on? Nothing. That's why I haven't mm-hmm. done anything. I have all the equipment on my on my cart and on Amazon, ready to hit proceed to check you out. Call it Oscar rated. Oscar rated? I don't know. Maybe that's not bad. Something. Oscar rated. Well, if you have any ideas, anyone that's listening. Yeah, anybody that is listening to this and you have a, a nice idea or something, just email Dustin and he'll he'll pass it along to we me. We could use some inspiration. Yeah. All right. Next question. Uh, would you rather drive during the day or at night? I'm a I'm a big night driver. Yeah? Huge night driver. If I can drive during the night, I'll drive all night, every night, every day, or whatever, every night. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. It mainly is everybody drives during the day, either to work or to their friend's house yeah. or to parties or whatever. But So there's always so much traffic, especially like in major cities like L.A., Portland, Seattle. Sure. It's horrible. Um, so I, I try to drive through during the night. That way I don't hit traffic. And then the other big reason is truck stops. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of drivers like to drive during the day. Yeah. And the, so what happens if you drive during the day? You have to shut down at night. But if I drive at night while you're shut down, I'll yeah. shut down while you're driving. And there's always parking at the truck stop during the day. Oh, at night it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, or else you're just, you're stuck. And then I always hear guys like, well, there was no parking and this, this and that. And I was like, well, drive at night. You know? That, yeah. I'm a big fan of, of night driving. Okay. Yeah. Well, you had mentioned before that you do the orientations here. Mm-hmm. So my seventh question is, what is your favorite part about doing orientation? I like I like talking to people, and I interact really well with everybody. Um, and I I always say like I want this to be the only trucking company that I work for mm-hmm. ever. And I'm ever since I started doing the orientations, I like I think my lucky stars that I never left because I hear some of the horror stories from the people that are coming in. Sure. And they're like, man, my old company would do this and they would do that and they would make me pay out of pocket for scales and re- they would reimburse me, but they would take forever. Then they, you know, and I'm just like, we don't do any of that stuff. Yeah. And I, I just, I never realized how really truly lucky these drivers and, and I was when I was driving until I started doing the orientations and talking to everybody and. And I came and I found out that uh, that this is the place, man. This is the place yeah. to be. Cool, cool. Yeah. Now, something I've noticed, a little <laughs> personal choice here, but I got to ask. Yeah. Uh, question number eight. Why have you been rocking the mustache recently? Well, I had a beard and I shaved the beard for April, but I didn't want to lose okay. everything. Because, if I mean, I have a baby face. And Israel, our recruiter, even said, like, you don't even look like the same person. Yeah, like, it, it was a change. Yeah. You'd know. Oh, yeah. And um, plus, I had a big tan line from where my beard was because I've, I've had it for so long. Yeah. Um, so I was like, you know what? I got to keep something. So I decided <laughs> to keep the, the stash. Yeah. And uh, I got mostly negative feedback on it but i pushed through and i persevered and i kept it the whole month and even though i thought about shaving it and i said you know what i'm gonna do it don't listen to what the haters have to say i mean i feel like if you can get past like that initial one or two days then you're like you know what it's all it's done yeah but that initial you're probably like oh my god i'm gonna go to work today yeah everybody's gonna see me i was like dude what did you do man but Growing the beard back out, it's slow. It's a slow process, but it'll be back in about a month. Nice. So. All right, question number nine. Do you have any pets? Let's get to uh, that 
No. Well, actually, that that's a lie. I have goldfish. And uh, no more dogs. No, I had I had the dogs, and my wife got sick of the dogs, and uh, so my in laws. One of them was my in laws dog. Yeah. And they kind of just dropped it off at my house one day and never t- took it back. <laughs> so I took it back. Right. And then the other one was a, a puppy, a German Shepherd puppy that mm-hmm. showed up at my cousin's uh, drop yard. He works for AAA. Oh, okay. And it was, he said, hey, there's like a this, street dog? Or yeah, something? street dog. And he's like, this is German Shepherd puppy. He's running around. They want to take him to the pound, but I don't want to take him to the pound. Do you want a dog? And I was like, I don't really want a dog, but I'll take him. And I fell in love with him. My daughter named him Bingo. And, uh, but he's a puppy, you know, and I, I work a lot and then I go to night school and all that stuff. Well, I wasn't in night school then, but I was still doing stuff after work. Right. And, uh, my wife got tired of him. He was chewing up everything yeah, yeah. and the kids toys. It takes and, about a year and a half, almost two years to get through all Yeah, that. this dog was about four months old. Yeah. So I asked it, I was like, Hey, does anybody want a German Shepherd puppy? He's all black. He's beautiful. He's got pointy ears and everything. And Casey, our, our safety guy, he was like, I've been looking at getting a dog. So I, I had to meet. They got along great. They were at the oh, dog cool. park. He was getting along with all the other dogs. So Casey took him to Phoenix and renamed him Denver. Nice. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Well, he said, <laughs> he's like, well, I'm from Denver. Oh, and, okay. I was yeah, like, so my wife liked the I name. I brought him from California to Phoenix, named him Denver. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. And his name was Bingo. Cool. So, uh, but no, yeah, just goldfish now. All right. Yeah. Now, do they, I mean, they don't die, right? We've lost two. Yeah, they, we had four. I heard they go. Yeah, they don't last that long. Yeah, and you might uh, have to cycle them in and out. Yeah, well, I tried doing that, but goldfish are expensive, dude. They're like seven bucks. No way. Yeah, well, that was like a dollar. Don't they give them away at the fair? Yeah, they give them away, but you got to pay like the five bucks oh, yeah, to get huh? the balls or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the cheap ones are at Walmart. But I don't want to buy the Walmart goldfish because they only last a week, you know. Yeah. So I go to this. Uh, it's called Jan's Fish Market or whatever fish store, or whatever. Those last about six months. Okay. But I mean, I can only ha- I can only buy so many goldfish. So sure. I had to teach my daughter about things that responsibility. Yeah, die and stuff. So. Oh yeah, that conversation. Yeah, too. yeah. So we just lost another one like a week ago, and my and my wife said don't don't buy any more. So we taught her like, hey, sometimes animals die, and this, this, and that, yeah. and so she she teared up a little bit, but she got through it. So. Yeah, I mean, it is sad, right? Yeah. So that his name sense. was uh, his name was Finley. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's a good fish name. Yeah. Yeah, she named him. Cool. All right. And final question of 10 questions with Oscar. Uh, what is your favorite TV show? You probably know this already, but I've seen The Office oh, yeah. in its entirety about five to- five or six times. It is the most popular show on Netflix. Yeah. And uh, I'm re-watching Parks and Rec right now, but The Office is my all-time favorite show. Uh, I mean, it's one of those shows that is incredibly quotable, and it has that rewatch quality. Yeah. It just never gets old. It doesn't, and then uh, you, I, I forget the episode still. Like I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Or like, man, I forgot this episode even was a thing, you know? So, But The Office. The Office, hands down, my favorite show. Awesome. All right. Well, that actually uh, does it for our podcast this month. Oscar, it felt great to be back and podcasting again. Yeah, I felt a little rusty at first. It's been a while. Yeah. Especially since you did the last one without me. I know. Well, what we're gonna we're <laughs> gonna try to get ahead of the schedule now. I'm gonna actually schedule out for next month now, not oh, okay. wait. Yeah. And uh, we want to get back to a very regular monthly release. Yeah. And uh, you know, continue to bring on guests from KKW, our drivers, and get to know some more people in the company as well as get to know some more departments. Yeah, that'd be great. Um... We want to have, uh, obviously, the shop on still. Yep. Um, yeah, and then just different people, different departments, different accomplishments, things that are happening. Right now, Angelina just got a bunch of merch in for the safety department. We'll have her on. I yeah. know, uh, obviously, we like to have safety on uh, generally about once a quarter to talk about some of the safety issues, usually weather things related. Yeah. We're releasing a new safety video soon. I know you just did yeah. the, the video with uh, the safety manager. So as That's, well as, that's you know, coming we out. And the then podcast. I've already talked to... Uh, a couple people, you know, one of the uh, recruiting assistants talked about having them on to discuss, you know, onboarding here. Yep. Talk to IT. And about, they've been here for a while, too, the recruiting assistants. Would love to have IT on, talk about that aspect, yep. you know, just some different elements of how a trucking company runs. That's right. Yeah. So it's going to be cool. Um, to all of our listeners that are tuning in right now, obviously, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate everyone uh, giving us, you know, essentially 
don't know, a little under an hour every time. Yeah. Hope yeah, you we enjoyed the show. Appreciate the listen and uh, keep giving us feedback. We can only grow with feedback. So. Right. So if you hear something you like, hear something you don't like, let us know. And uh, be sure to spread the word. So if you like the show, share it. Um, share it. Comment. Comment. Participate. And um, that should do it. Thanks, everyone. So, thanks for listening, and we'll be back. Stay safe.